Hello, everybody. I'm going to start a new devlog series on the game that I just made. It's not released yet, but it is pretty much done. Just adding some last bells and whistles to it before publishing. It's called Snoob. It's essentially a classic snake, like the arcade game, meets a Rubik's Cube so that you can play snake in a 3D environment. This devlog series is going to cover sort of everything that I did uh, in order to make the game. You're welcome to follow along and sort of create it yourself, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be posting the code onto GitHub or not yet. Um, the first thing that I'm doing is just creating a couple different directories that I can store different objects for the game and different code for the game. Um, I always do this at the beginning of any project just so that it's organized in a way that I like. Um, there's a few things that I think as I've made more and more games and small projects on Unity, I've, I've always decided that I needed. Uh, one of which is a game manager that kind of controls the game states and the flow of the game. And then the other one is the canvas manager, which controls all of the UI. And here I am sort of putting together um, that the canvas and the canvas manager. So all of the UI and sort of menus that are gonna be in the game. I did actually uh, record everything that I did to make this game. So this is going to be a little bit of a long devlog series and it, it should cover everything. Here I'm taking Text Mesh Pro, uh, which is just the text that you see in Unity, and I'm changing its colors and the way that it scales so that it'll always be as large as possible to fit into um, its parent container, which is whichever UI element is holding it. In this case, it's like the button, that white rectangle. And I'm also, uh, I'm grabbing some new uh, fonts for it as well. So that it can look a little bit pretty, a little special, if you will. Um, yeah, this part of the project setup actually doesn't require a ton of coding. Uh, this is mostly just getting things to look the way you want and getting, thing, getting things organized the way you want. Here I'm setting the gradient of the button so that it's not, it's not a single simple color. It actually changes from one color to another. I think that makes it look a little more clean um, obviously I got to change the background of the button so that it is still readable. Can't have like a white on white situation. That's very bad, um, practice for, for creating UI. Let's see here. Once I finish tuning this, we can move on to the next step. I'm probably going to end up changing this, uh, as, as I continue to develop too, just trying to get something that I like. Um, you know. Time to make a script for the button. I like to do these just so that uh, the buttons are more interactive. So I'm essentially I'm creating code for the button that will allow it to change itself when you as the user interact with that button. So in this case, um, I'm making it so that when your mouse hovers on the button or comes off, when it stops hovering or starts hovering on the button, the button will change size so that it, it feels more responsive. So it'll grow and shrink with uh the hovering of the mouse over it obviously this is something that will work on a computer but you wouldn't necessarily be able to do this on a uh on a phone or a mobile device because there is no hovering your finger is either pressing the button or it's not pressing the button and so i'd have to sort of find a different way to uh replicate this behavior for mobile but for now i'm just going to build it for a computer and see how that goes so essentially what i'm doing is i've set this variable um for the local size to increase to 110% when you hover. And then when you stop hovering on it, it will go back down to its normal size of just 100%. Um, and I'm a little stuck here. Uh, as you can see, some of, the, some of the text that I've written, some of the code is underlined in red, which means there's a bug. It's the onClick function, which this is, this is what tells the button what to do when it is clicked, uh, but it's not currently recognizing that part of the code. And I think it's because I actually mislabeled the file for this code. I, I titled it button, um, but button is already, that's a preset term in Unity. So you shouldn't be making custom code or custom things that are just called button. Um, that can cause confusion, but I think I think I might've sorted that out here. We'll add a little title for our menu. This is the, this is the home screen menu. This is what you're gonna open up to when you uh, open the game. And so I'm gonna give it the title of the game. This title will also probably change as I continue developing. But um, in fact, yeah, I, going back on this, I can tell you right now, it's gonna change to Snoob later on, as in Snake Cube. But for now, uh, I've just caught 3D Snake. 
want to give it a little bit of a gold to make it feel royal, special, like it's a proper title. Um, and as you can see, I'm using a different font here too that I picked out earlier. There we go. So that's <laughs> that's what it looks like. Doesn't really have a whole lot else on the menu right now, um, but I'm probably going to want this title at the top, and uh, I'm probably going to put all of the buttons that I would need on that starting menu underneath it. And I'm going to want these buttons to scale with the screen. So if you're on a bigger or smaller computer, I'm going to want the buttons to scale. And what I'm going to use for that is a vertical layout group, uh, which is a component that you can attach to UI elements in Unity. And it essentially uh, determines how those components are going to be scaled. So anything, anything in this button container, which you can see on the left column of the screen, there's the button container, which is highlighted. It contains all of the buttons that I'm going to have. And the button container has the vertical layout group component, which you can see on the left-hand column of the screen. And so as I, as I continue to adjust that layout group, it'll determine how these buttons scale. And so as you can see, they're bigger than how they started because they're sort of scaling up to fit the size of their parent container, uh, which is the button container. All right. Got to give them labels. I, I like giving stuff fun labels just to make it a little more uh, personal. But obviously, um, you know, you can always give it the standard, the standard labels. Just cleaning up the last, I had a couple more bugs here, cleaning those up. Um, there's just syntax issues. And also I needed to import uh, a different package. But okay, so that's going to be how it looks. And you can see when I hover, it's blue. It's not, the buttons are not yet getting bigger and smaller, but we will fix that down the line. I want to, yeah, I want to actually give the UI a proper background so that you're not looking, you're not looking into the world of the game. You're only looking at the UI when the menu's open. And I want to make this title a little bit darker. I do still want it to be gold. I don't know if I'm going to end up keeping that though. We'll see. All right. That's nice. And you can see the hovering color change too, to sort of match that title gold. Beautiful. Okay. And now we're going to create the canvas manager really quick. Um, as, as I continue developing, there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to add into the Canvas Manager. But the first thing that I know I want is a way to display whichever menu the player is on or whatever the relevant menu is at a given time. So like when you open the game, you should see the home screen with that menu. But if you click on like a cosmetics panel or like if you click on a button that should take you to a different menu, I want to be able to easily switch to that menu. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of the menus I create inside the canvas, and I'm going to give references to each one of those menus to this code right here, which is the canvas manager. And so the canvas manager will have a reference to all the different menus. And when you switch to a menu, it's going to hide all of the menus so that they're all invisible. And then it will make whichever menu you just clicked to see, it'll make that one visible. And the reason I do this is actually, this isn't the most efficient way to code this. Uh, the best thing to do would be to keep track of the currently visible menu, only hide that one, and then make the next menu show. But it is a lot easier for me as the developer if I just hide all of the menus, because then I don't need to worry about determining which menu is next. If you're enjoying this, please like and feel free to subscribe. I will be uh, cranking out a lot more of these videos. Um, in the meantime, have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.